Today's lesson is about multiplying and dividing mixed numbers. Uh, we're going to use all of the rules we learned for multiplying and dividing fractions, along with another fraction rule that we learned a while back, uh, to successfully multiply and divide mixed numbers today. Let's get started. So, like I said, we're going to use all of the multiplying and dividing fractions rules, but we're going to add one other rule in that you already know about. And that rule is that before we start doing any multiplying or dividing, we have to change every mixed number in the problem into improper fractions. So, that's a skill you should have remembered from previous lessons, but let's review it. If I give you a fraction, or a mixed number, here the mixed number is 4 and 5 sevenths, and I ask you to make an improper fraction out of it, remember what you're supposed to do is multiply the bottom number or the denominator times the whole number, and then add the numerator to that uh, product. So here we have 7 times 4 plus 5, that'd be 7 times 4 plus 5, uh, over 7 because the denominator does not change. 7 times 4 is 28, and 28 plus 5 is 33, so 4 and 5 sevenths written as an improper fraction is 33 over 7. So, like I said, we're going to do that with all of the mixed numbers and the problems first, and then we're going to use all of the rules you've already learned for multiplying and dividing fractions. So here's the first example. 5 and 1 seventh times 4 and 9 tenths. So, again, the first thing I want to do is estimate our answer to see, or estimate the product to see if our answer that we get at the end is going to make sense. Here, we're going to estimate 5 and 1 seventh to about 5, because 1 seventh is closer to 0 than 1 half. So since it's closer to 0, that's like 5 with a 0 fraction next to it, so we're going to estimate that to be about 5. The 4 and 9 tenths fraction, we're going to estimate the 5 also. That's because we, you have a 4 as the whole number, and 9 tenths is closer to 1 than it is to 1 half. So 4 and 1 together make 5, so 4 and 9 tenths is about 5. So if we take our two estimates, 5 and 5, and we multiply them, what we're going to find is that our estimate is going to be 5 times 5 is 25. So our actual answer when we do our multiplying should be about 25. So now let's do our multiplying to see if our answer actually does become close to 25. First, change into improper fractions. So uh, we just practiced doing that. Here I did 7 times 5 plus 1. That's 35 plus 1, or 36, over 7. And 4 times 10, which is 40, plus 9 more, which is 49, 49 over 10. Now that we have our improper fractions, we can do everything that we've previously been doing with multiplying. So let's see if we can simplify first. Remember, we can simplify either going up and down, which is vertically, or diagonally. The only way you cannot simplify is sideways, or horizontally. So... Um, one thing that sticks out is 49 and 7. Both of those numbers can be divided by 7. 49 divided by 7 equals 7, and 7 divided by 7 equals 1. Diagonally the other way, what I notice is that 36 and 10 are both even numbers, and every even number can be divided by 2. So if you divide 36 by 2, you get 18, and if you divide 10 by 2, you get 5. So now we have our simplified uh, fractions here. Let's multiply sideways, like we did in the previous lesson for multiplying fractions. And when we do that, 18 times 7 gives you 126. 1 times 5 gives you 5. So there's our final answer. The only thing that we need to do is convert it back into a mixed number. And remember, you do that by doing long division. You see how many times 5 can go into 126. So off to the side, you could do your long division. If you do your long division, you'll figure out that the answer is 25 with a remainder of 1. So the way we write that is 25 and 1 fifth. So does our answer come close to our estimate? Our estimate was 25. Our actual answer is 25 and 1 fifth. Those two numbers are pretty close, so that probably means that we did all of our work right. And since I am a math teacher, I can tell you we did all of our math right. So 25 and 1 fifth is the actual answer. Now let's try a dividing problem. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to estimate first and see what the answer should be close to. And after we do that, we're going to do our work to see if our estimate and our answer kind of match up. So let's estimate. <clears throat> 6 and 1 fourth we're going to estimate to 6 because 1 fourth is closer to 0 than it is to 1 half. So 6 and really 0 can be estimated to be 6. 
1 and 7 eighths we're going to estimate to 2 because 7 eighths is really close to 1. So if we have 1 as our whole number and then almost 1 as our fraction, uh, the estimate for this is going to be about 2. So if we divide our two numbers, 6 divided by 2, our estimate for our quotient is going to be 3. So we're going to do our math here uh, with the rules I'm going to show you, and we're going to see if our actual answer becomes close to 3. So, first thing, improper fractions again. That's what we have to do first for all of these mixed number problems. So what I did is 6 times 4 plus 1 to get 25 over 4, and 8 times 1 plus 7 to get 15 over 8. Now, with division, we have that extra step in at the beginning that we usually uh, have to do before we multiply. And that is keep, change, reciprocate. So keep, 25 over 4 stays 25 over 4. Change, division to multiplication. And then reciprocate, 15 over 8 becomes 8 over 15. So now we can simplify. Let's look diagonally or up and down. The first thing I notice, 8 and 4. 8 and 4 can both be divided by 4, and 25 and 15 can both be divided by 5. So when we do the first step, 25 and 15, 25 divided by 5 is 5, 15 divided by 5 is 3. And like I said in the other direction, 8 and 4 can both be divided by 4, 8 divided by 4 is 2, 4 divided by 4 is 1. So now let's multiply sideways. We have 5 times 2 to get 10, and 1 times 3 to equal 3. So last step, make it back into a mixed number. How many times can 3 go into 10? Well, 3 goes into 10 three times with one remainder, which means our final answer, our final final answer, is 3 and 1 third. So if we look back to our estimate, our estimate was 3. 3 and 1 third is really close to 3, so that means that we probably did our work right. And just like the last problem, I am a math teacher, so I can tell you we did our math right. So... Again, really the only new thing with this lesson so far is that we're changing into improper fractions before we do all of our multiplying and dividing rules. Okay, let's try some practice. Hit pause on your uh, video, try these two problems. When you're done, you can hit play. I'll have the answers up here for you and explain how to do everything. Okay, so here are your steps uh, for both problems. For step one, we made improper fractions and simplified. So you can see 4 times 3 is 12, plus 1 is 13. 9 times 2 is 18, plus 8 is 26. And then I was able to notice that 26 and 4 are both even, so they can be divided by 2, so I simplified them. Over here, uh, 75 is 8 times 9 is 72, plus 3 is 75. 4 times 6 is 24, plus 1 more is 25. Okay, over 6. And you can see here, I did my keep, change, reciprocate, and all my simplifying. So when you keep, change, reciprocate, keep change to multiplication, reciprocate, and then I did all my simplifying here. So 8 and 6 can be divided by 2. 8 divided by 2 is 4. 6 divided by 2 is 3. And then 75 and 25, those are numbers I always think about. I always think of quarters when I think of 25s, 50s, 75s. So 75 is 3 quarters. 25 is 1 quarter. Um, what we did is divide by 25. Uh, 25 divided by 25 gives you 1. 75 divided by 25 gives you 3. Okay, and then the final step is doing your multiplying and changing back into mixed numbers. <clears throat> when you do number 1, you get 169 over 18. Remember that 13 times 13 gives you one of your perfect squares you learned earlier in the year. So I told you it would be helpful if you memorized those when we learned them earlier. If not, you probably had to go off to the side and do some multiplication. Uh, and then when you do your long division here, 18 can go into 169 nine times. And then you have 7 as your remainder, so that becomes your numerator. Here... Uh, 3 times 3 is 9, 4 times 1 is 4, so we have smaller numbers in this problem, which is always nice. Uh, and then 4 goes into 9 twice with one remainder, so there's your mixed number. Okay, we have two more examples I want you to try. Uh, I put these here because there are whole numbers. I want you to think about what you can do to a whole number to turn it into a fraction. So hit pause and try it out, and then you can look to see how I did my work and see how you did. Okay, so here's what I did. You can make any whole number into a fraction by putting a 1 below it. So 2 becomes 2 over 1. 12 and a half becomes 2 times 12, which is 24, plus 1 is 25. So 25 over 2 is your improper fraction. Um, and then I simplified. 
twos can both be divided by two, so two divided by two is one, two divided by two is one. Over here, I did three times four to get 12. 12 plus three is 15, so 15 over four. And then uh, nine can become nine over one, just like we had two over one over here. When I do my keep change reciprocate, I change division to multiplication, and nine over one becomes one over nine. Both of those numbers that are in red here, 15 and 9, can be divided by 3. That's why this becomes 5 and this becomes 3. And then when you finish up your work, uh, this one over here becomes 25 over 1. And just like what I did at the beginning of the problem, I put a 1 below the number to make it a fraction. I can take the 1 away from the number here to make it back into a whole number. So 25 is your most simplified answer. Here, uh, three, or 5 times 1 is 5 and 4 times 3 is 12. Nice thing about this problem, it's not a mixed number, not an improper fraction. It's a plain, regular fraction that's already in simplest form. Okay? So, that's how you multiply and divide mixed numbers. Uh, go back and rewatch if you need to. As always, like I say, practice, uh, use this for practice for your quiz, for your homework, uh, and to refresh on things as you need. I'll talk to you next time.